Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch and I'd like to share with you how to create and update a Swift package that can be used with Swift UI. Now what, you might ask, is a Swift package and why would I want to learn how to create them? Swift packages are reusable components of Swift that you can share across Xcode projects. This allows you to make changes in one place and update all of your projects on demand using Swift Package Manager. I discovered this through a lot of reading, research, and watching YouTube videos, but none of them gave me the full meal deal. I always ran into problems. However, the Swift community is great, and through Twitter and Stack Overflow, my questions were answered so that I thought I would share my findings here in this video. So this is what we're going to do. We'll take a look at a custom control I created, which is a Swift UI view, and we'll use it to create a Swift package. There'll be some access errors, and we'll need to fix them, so I'll show you how to do that. Then we'll push it to a GitHub repository and test it by importing it into a new project using Swift Package Manager. And finally, we'll go back and update the package by adding a new feature, and then use Swift Package Manager again to update our existing project. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the master project from the link in the notes below. If you're interested in this, then let's go. Our custom SwiftUI view is a ratings control that, when tapped, allows users to make a rating, something you see a lot. The control has a number of different properties that allows users to make changes when adding the control to one of their own views. We can change the maximum rating, we can change the width of the SF symbol that's being used, as well as the color and the actual symbols that are being used for the open and fill states. Lots of options here, so I think this could be used in many projects. It's an ideal choice for a Swift package. So let's see how we can do that. Creating a Swift package is very straightforward, but there are some things that you need to pay attention to. But before we do that, I'm going to first remove the color property so that we can build our package without it and then add it back afterwards. That way you get to see how to update a Swift package. I'll remove the color property here and set the foreground color as a constant here. Of course with it missing here we have to go back to our content view and remove it from here as well. Let me build and run now and verify that everything still works. It does. We have a yellow heart now. So we're ready to create our Swift package. To create a Swift package, go to File, New, Swift Package, and give your package a name. I'll call mine CT Rating, where CT is for Createx Solutions, my company, and I preface all of my packages with those two letters. Add it to the project and make the group the top level folder. Make sure both are the blue icon. I like to make sure that I also create it outside but at the same level of my project folder for easy access later. You should create a Git repository now, but if you forget, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Now click on Create. This has now created a new Swift package at the top level of your Xcode project and open the package.swift manifest file. The first thing you should do is restrict usage to iOS 13 or later, as that's the minimum for Swift UI. So right after the name, you can type platform, and it takes an array, but all we need is a single element, iOS version 13. You should also add something to the readme file, as this is what will be presented on the GitHub page. If you're going to make it public, it should give instructions on how to use it. This can be edited later. So right now I'm just going to give a description of the project. Now let's open the source folder and delete the package placeholder file. This is going to be replaced by all of the files that are part of your package. In my case it's just the single file of the same name. You can include any number of Swift files and I suppose the most significant deficiency for iOS developers over CocoaPods is that the Swift package can only support source code. You can't include any resources such as images, zip files, storyboards, and test data. 
There is a proposal under discussion to add support for resources, but it's not possible right now. You can, as I said, create a CocoaPod if you want to add resources, but that's a lot more work. Trust me on this one. Now we are ready to do some testing. But first, for testing in this project, we have to add our Swift package as a framework. So go to your project target and add a new framework. If you completed the previous steps properly, you should see the Swift package at the top, so add it now. If we go back to our content view, we'll see we have some errors. One reason is that we haven't imported our package, so let's do that first. Building our project produces another error, and this is because of access control. Our package files must have public access, so go back to your package files and make your Swift UI view public and the body public as well. Building one more time now gives a different error. And this one is telling us that the initializer is inaccessible due to internal protection. The memberwise initializer for structs will contain all of the properties except constants with default values, and it will have an internal access type. So it's not going to be visible from another module. So we need to create a public initializer, and within that initializer, initialize all of our Swift UI view properties. One for max ratings and current ratings, which is a binding, so we need to add it this way. Then width and open SF symbol and fill SF symbol. We can add our default values in the initializer. Now we can complete the initializer here. There's one more problem, however, and it won't compile. And the reason is that the current rating is a binding, so we need an underscore after self. If we build and run now, we'll see we have successfully created our first Swift package. You're now ready to push your package to GitHub. Locate your Swift package, which should be at the same level as your master project from which we extracted it, and open package.swift. This will open the entire project. Remember, we forgot to create our Git repository when we created our package, so let's do that now. Go to Source Control, Create Git Repository. Now you can choose Source Control, Commit, and make sure all files are selected, add a comment, and commit your files. We're going to push our repository up to remote service, and I'm going to use GitHub. If you don't already have a GitHub account, go to github.com and create one. It's free. Within Xcode Preferences and the Accounts tab, if you aren't already signed into the remote, Tap the plus, select your remote repository, and sign in. Now that you're signed in, select the Source Control Navigator, and right-click on your project and select Create Remote. You can choose whether or not you want it to be private or publicly accessible, and I'm going to choose private so only I can use this one. There's one more thing that you have to do. Each update to your package requires a tag. So right click on your branches folder and tag the master. I'm going to begin with 1.0.0 and increment from there as I update the package. Now the final thing to do is to push the repository and your tags to the remote. So choose source control, push, and make sure you have include tags checked. Well, it's time to test to see if we've successfully created a remote Swift package. I'm going to create a new single file project and just give it a name for testing. With the file open, we can go ahead now and add a remote Swift package. To do this, we choose Swift Packages Add Package Dependency. You may see your package in the list, but if not, or if, for example, you are getting a package from someone else's repository, you'd have to type in the repository URL. 
So let's just do that to test. It's https.github.com, followed by your account name, followed by your package name, which in my case is CT Rating. Click on Next. It finds it. Next again. And then Finish. Let's open Content View and import our package. I'm going to replace our Hello World text in my body with my CT Rating. It needs a state variable for current rating, so I'll create that and set the default to 2. I'll set my max rating to 5 and the current rating to my just declared state variable. I'll build and run. And it works. Let's test out our parameters. Let's add a width of 40. And I'm going to change our SF symbols to the equivalent heart ones instead of the default stars. Build and run once more. And it works. We're good. Next, let's see what it takes to add back in our color property to update our package and push it up to our remote. To update our package, we go back to our source Git repository and add back the color property to our CT rating view. Before we do that, however, let's remove the default values from the declarations as they're not needed. We added them in the initializer. Now, after the width property, let's add color, which is of type UI color. We'll update our initializer as well, assigning the default system yellow UI color in the initializer. Then in our body, use this property instead of the constant value. We can commit those changes to our repository, and before we push it up to GitHub, we have to make sure that we update the tag. So right-click on the branch and choose Tag Master, and add the tag 1.0.1. Finally, under Source Control, push the updates and the tag up to the remote. Let's switch back to our project. We see that here the current version is still 1.0.0. To update to the latest package, choose File, Swift Packages, Update to Latest Package Versions. This will query the repository to see if there's a version greater than our current one and update it. It finds 1.0.1 and updates our module. With it updated, we can now add our color after the width parameter. And build and run. And sure enough, it's working as designed. We have successfully created a Swift package, pushed it to a remote repository, and subsequently updated it. We've met our goals. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll continue to build out similar tutorials for Swift developers who've left the starting gate but still need to add to their toolbox. You can check out my Swift Package playlist to see videos of the Swift packages I've created. Visit my website to see my iOS app portfolio of apps currently on the App Store. And check out my GitHub repository. And yes, even though it shows CT rating as private here, I've now made it public. Links to all of these are in the notes below. So thanks for watching. I'm most active on Twitter, so follow me there for notifications of other Swift-related things that I'm up to.